Welcome to section two of genetics. In this section, we'll be discussing imprinting and uniparental disomy. Let's get started. Imprinting refers to the idea that an offspring's gene expression becomes parent-specific due to inactivation of the opposite parent's allele. This is commonly caused by DNA methylation, which suppresses transcription and can alter gene expression. This is a figure of the structure of DNA, which can be found in section one of molecular biology. Recall that when histones are methylated, this usually represses or inactivates DNA transcription. I'll draw that here. However, imprinting is slightly different because it's caused by methylation of DNA. So for example, methylation of cytosine in DNA, which I've indicated right here, can result in imprinting. Both of these reactions require the molecule S-adenosylmethionine, or SAM, which is involved in methylation reactions. Two clinical disorders that are commonly associated with imprinting are Prader-Willi syndrome and Angelman syndrome. This is a figure of the genetics of Prader-Willi syndrome, which can be found in section two of genetics. Notice that a spermatid is shown on the left and a secondary oocyte is shown on the right. When these two cells fuse, they form a zygote. From the figure, you can see that the long arm of chromosome 15 contains the PWS gene. Both Prader-Willi syndrome and Angelman syndrome involve chromosome 15, more specifically, the section Q11 to Q13. Recall that the short arm of the chromosome is denoted by a P, and the long arm is denoted by a Q. The paternal PWS gene is normally active, but the maternal PWS gene is normally silenced. Notice the methyl groups shown on the maternal region right here. In Prader-Willi syndrome, the paternal PWS gene is deleted or mutated, which is shown right here. Because the maternal gene is silenced and the paternal gene is defective, the offspring will not inherit a functional PWS gene, which will result in Prader-Willi syndrome. Some students remember that the paternal chromosome is deleted by using the letter P in Prader-Willi syndrome. The symptoms of Prader-Willi syndrome include obesity, hyperphagia, intellectual disability, hypogonadism, hypotonia, and temperature instability. The two most important of these to remember are probably obesity and hyperphagia. This is a figure of the genetics of Angelman syndrome, which can be found in section two of genetics. From the figure, you can see that the long arm of chromosome 15 in the Q11 to Q13 section also contains the UBE3A gene. The maternal UBE3A gene is normally active, but the paternal gene is normally silenced. Notice the methyl groups shown on the paternal region right here. In Angelman syndrome, the maternal UBE3A gene is deleted or mutated which is shown right here. Because the paternal gene is silenced and the maternal region is defective, the offspring will not inherit a functional UBE3A gene, which results in Angelman syndrome. Some students remember that the maternal chromosome is deleted by using the letter M in Angelman syndrome. The symptoms of Angelman syndrome include inappropriate laughter, intellectual disability, seizures, and ataxia. The most important symptom to remember is probably inappropriate laughter. Okay, let's do a question. A five-year-old boy is found to have hyperphagia, obesity, and intellectual disability. Cytogenetic analysis reveals a deletion involving chromosome 15Q11 to Q13. Which of the following is most likely true of this patient? A, the maternally inherited chromosome 15Q11 to Q13 contains a deletion. B, the paternally inherited chromosome 15 q 11 to Q13 is methylated. C, the paternally inherited chromosome 15Q11 to Q13 contains a deletion. Or D, the maternally inherited chromosome 15Q11 to Q13 is acetylated. Hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this boy's presentation is consistent with Prader-Willi syndrome. We can deduce this because he has hyperphagia, obesity, intellectual disability, and a deletion involving chromosome 15Q11 to Q13. The correct answer is C, the paternally inherited chromosome 15Q11 to Q13 contains a deletion. If we look at the figure, we can see that Prader-Willi syndrome is caused by a mutation or deletion of the paternal PWS gene. If we return to the question, we can see that B is incorrect because the maternal chromosome is methylated, resulting in a silenced PWS gene. Likewise, D is incorrect because acetylation of this region would result in gene activation, not silencing. So again, the answer is C. The paternally inherited chromosome 15Q11 to Q13 contains a deletion. Okay, we've discussed the two most common causes of these two disorders, but Angelman syndrome and Prader-Willi syndrome can also be caused by uniparental disomy. Uniparental disomy refers to the idea that two copies of a chromosome are inherited from one parent and no copies are inherited from the other parent. For example, 
Normally, one copy of chromosome 21 is inherited paternally and one copy is inherited maternally. However, if both copies are inherited maternally, then this is called uniparental disomy. Uniparental disomy is caused by non-disjunction followed by the loss of genetic information. Non-disjunction during meiosis 1 results in heterodisomy and non-disjunction in meiosis 2 results in isodisomy. Let's pull up a figure so you can see what I mean. This is a figure of meiosis, which can be found in section two of genetics. This should definitely be a review from undergrad, so I don't wanna waste your time covering this basic information. However, very briefly, notice that two homologous chromosomes are replicated and then divide several times through meiosis one and meiosis two, resulting in four daughter cells. Also notice that recombination occurs right here. This is a figure of uniparental disomy, which can be found in section two of genetics. Notice from the image that the left side illustrates non-disjunction during meiosis one, resulting in heterodisomy, and the right side illustrates non-disjunction during meiosis two, resulting in isodisomy. This figure shows the process occurring in an oocyte, followed by fertilization from a sperm, but it could also be the other way around. Okay, notice at the top of the figure that the oogonium initially has two copies of chromosome 15. One is labeled A and the other is labeled B. During meiosis 1, these replicate their genetic information resulting in sister chromatids. You can see these right here. Normally, the cell should divide and the chromosomes should separate equally to opposite sides. However, in non-disjunction during meiosis 1, the chromosomes fail to separate, resulting in one cell with twice as much genetic information, which you can see right here. Ultimately, two daughter cells lack genetic information which you can see right here, and the other two daughter cells contain twice as much information, which you can see right here. Next, notice that fertilization occurs, so now the cell has three copies of chromosome 15. However, trisomy 15 is incompatible with life, so one of these copies must be lost in order for the embryo to survive. So in the next step, notice that there is loss of genetic information. This means the final zygote contains two copies of chromosome 15, both of which were inherited from the mother. Finally, notice that non-disjunction during meiosis 1 results in a daughter cell containing one chromosome 15A and one chromosome 15B. However, if you look at the right side of the figure, you can see that if non-disjunction occurs during meiosis 2, then this results in two 15B chromosomes. This slight difference ultimately determines if we refer to the abnormality as heterodisomy or isodisomy. Okay, so how does this apply to Prader-Willi syndrome and Angelman syndrome? So both maternal copies of chromosome 15 are normally silenced. Therefore, in uniparental disomy, both copies of chromosome 15 will be silenced because they're both inherited from the mother. In this case, the patient will not have a functional PWS gene from the father, resulting in the development of Prader-Willi syndrome. So normally, this chromosome right here that's lost contains the PWS gene. Therefore, the loss of this chromosome results in Prader-Willi syndrome caused by uniparental disomy. You can imagine the same problem occurring in spermatogenesis, which could result in Angelman syndrome. This brings up an important point. Non-disjunction during oogenesis can result in uniparental disomy, causing Prader-Willi syndrome. On the other hand, non-disjunction during spermatogenesis can result in uniparental disomy, causing Angelman syndrome. Because non-disjunction is much more common in women than in men, uniparental disomy causing Prader-Willi syndrome is much more common than uniparental disomy causing Angelman syndrome. Okay, let's do a question. A three-year-old boy is found to have obesity, hyperphasia, and intellectual disability. Restriction fragment length polymorphism analysis is performed to determine the origin of the patient's genetic defect. DNA samples are obtained and exposed to a restriction enzyme. Southern blotting of restriction fragments from chromosome 15 are shown below. What can most likely be concluded about the findings shown above? A. The boy inherited two copies of chromosome 15 from his mother due to non-disjunction of meiosis 1. B. The boy inherited two copies of chromosome 15 from his mother due to non-disjunction of meiosis 2. C. The boy inherited one heavily methylated copy of chromosome 15 from his mother. Or D. The boy inherited one heavily acetylated copy of chromosome 15 from his mother. Hopefully from the question stem, you notice that this boy has a presentation consistent with Prader-Willi syndrome, including obesity, hyperphasia, and intellectual disability. We covered restriction fragment length polymorphisms in the chapter on lab techniques, but recall that restriction fragments are simply fragments of DNA that are the product of DNA degrading enzymes. Because these fragments were from chromosome 15, we can deduce that the bands shown in the figure must represent this region of DNA. 
from the image, we can see that the boy has one band that lines up nicely with his mother right here. However, notice that this band is twice as thick. The thick band represents the inheritance of both sister chromatids. Because sister chromatids are identical to each other, they produce equal size restriction fragments. In other words, the thick band represents non-disjunction, which occurred during meiosis II. So the answer is B. How would the results have appeared if the correct answer was A? The result would have looked something like this. In this example, notice that the child shares the exact same chromosomes as his mother, meaning he inherited a pair of homologous chromosomes. So this pattern represents homologous chromosomes, whereas this pattern represents sister chromatids. If we look back at the overview figure, we can see that non-disjunction during meiosis II results in the inheritance of two sister chromatids. So notice that there are two 15B chromosomes, or two pink chromosomes. This is also called isodisomy. This is what was represented by the restriction fragments in the question two identical restriction fragments which resulted in one thick band. Alternatively, the left side of the image shows non-disjunction during meiosis I, and this results in the inheritance of a pair of homologous chromosomes, which you can see right here. Because these two chromosomes are slightly different from one another, restriction fragments would appear as two distinct bands.